Because my previous Catan research video was appreciated by so many people, I decided to go through this process again with different questions and some new interesting results I'm sure you want to watch. But I'll have to admit I finished the research two years ago and I didn't upload because, well, I really, really like winning. But I wanted to upload the video, so here we go. The data set for this research was taken in the King of Catan community, which is a community with more than 2000 players with a very diverse skill set, but overall a very high skill level. The total data set included 719 entries, but not all of them were completely filled out. So in terms of the baseline research, we had 516 games. In this graph, you see the total production of the starting settlements the winner won with or 21 pips of production. That could be an 8, 5, 10, which is equal to 12 pips of production and a 9 for 11 which is equal to 9 pips of production so that would combine for 21 pips of production and you can see 21 is also the median for this graph which is very close to a bell curve so the second question is how many monopolies did you play during this game so there's three options you didn't play a monopoly uh, which indicates the zero you played one monopoly or you played two monopolies but quite a lot of winners did play a monopoly or even two Considering there's 25 development cards, there's 4 players and only 2 monopolies, this graph is both historical and a big whoop. Because in 31% of the games, the winner played a monopoly. We already knew the monopoly is very strong, but it's also historical because it's proof of how strong the monopoly is. And because it's higher than 25%, and in many games the entire development card deck isn't even played, it really shows the ridiculous power of the monopoly. So for this question I asked the winners how many 7s were rolled during this game. So not how many they rolled individually, but in total. You can see the 8, the 7, the 9, the 12, 11, 10 and 15 are the most popular in those games the 7 was rolled either eight times or seven times as most often and the other numbers are quite often occurring as well so based on this you can predict how influential it is to be blocked by the robber and you can decide hey do i build a city here or do i buy a knight because you know how impactful it will be if the robber is going to hit you also a seven on average is rolled every six rolls based on this we can conclude that an average game of Catan takes between 50 and 60 turns so in this next graph we see that 58 percent of the winners ended up with the large army while 32 percent of the winners claimed to have not compete for it and also didn't get it 10 percent of the winners however tried to get the largest army missed out and still took the win home anyways so that's quite impressed or very lucky depending how you look at it for the longest road it's a different story 46 percent of the winners ended up with the longest road which is 12 percent less than winners who won with the largest army 44 percent of the winners didn't compete for it at all 10 percent of the winners actually tried to take it and failed but won without taking the longest road so this graph is a bit more confusing, but it actually combines two previous graphs about the largest army and the longest road. On the horizontal X, you see the answers to whether or not the winners had the largest army. So where it says yes, it answers to who had the largest army. However, the color indicates if the winner had the longest road or not. So the green bar on the right side are the winners who won the game with both the largest army and the longest road which is only 16%, but the players who won with neither is even lower, as you can see at the bottom left, which is 6%. I also asked players what ports they built on within their first three settlements. So that's the first two initial settlements and the first in-game settlement. And the answers were quite interesting. So it turns out 32% of the winners built on a 3 for 1 port. 29% of the winners didn't build on a port at all within their first 3 settlements. 10% of the winners utilized the wood port, 9% of the winners utilized the sheep port, and the same counts for the wheat port, while 7% of the winners only had the brick port within the first 3 settlements. The ore port however was the least popular because it only had 3% of the winners building on there with the first 3 settlements. And 1% of the winners built on 2 different ports within their first 3 settlements. So this research doesn't give you any data on how the other players perform but you can still match that with what is your experience and how does this match up with the profile of the winning player you have in your head this is the same graph as the previous one however now we only look at setups with 21 pips of production or more the percentages change a little bit so the 3 for 1 port becomes 34 percent no port at all becomes 28 percent brick and wood both have 10 percent wheat 8 percent sheep port 6 percent ore port 3 percent and there were no winners who had multiple ports and more than 21 pips of production with the first two settlements so on this graph you see that the stats don't change a lot for the winners who took the largest army however winners who took the longest road see a lot better results by not building on any ports with the first three settlements. 36% of winners who ended up with the longest road didn't build on the port within their first three settlements. So it's not an end-all be-all conclusion, but it's very
very interesting. 64% of the winners still built on the board and took the longest road. But I mean, it's still a 7% job. We also asked the winners how much production of each resource they had within their starting settlements. And to be honest, the results for this are wild. When there is a zero, it means they didn't start with any ore because I'm only highlighting the ore here. This is the weirdest result because it means in 45% of the games were won without starting on any ore. And believe me, I've triple checked this result because I still cannot believe it. But I do have a few explanations for it. And the most likely reason is this. RVG players were blocked so severely in 2021, much more than I see today, that they decided to not start on any ore, or that players who didn't play RVG had a really good shot at winning because the RVG players were always targeting each other. Today, I 100% see the best results with RVG, but 2021 was a little different, I feel like. In 2021, I worked on this research with Dave Magno, and believe me, he did a whole lot of work on this, but this was the graph we were still trying to figure out, and this was ultimately the graph be left unfinished so how it works is this so there's uh, many different strategies so you have unknown or we cheap port strategy wood brick so the road builder strategy would we cheap wood brick and port strategy so they were based on criteria which i will leave in the description uh, the port player must have had uh, a port within the first three settlements so a two from one port within the first three settlements and a number of production for that specific port. I believe it's four. And if it's combined with Orvi cheap, it also deals with criteria being high enough for ore wheat and sheep to become an Orvi cheap port strategy. And the same is true for wood brick plus port, wood wheat sheep plus port. You can play wood wheat sheep with a three for one port as well. So that's why it's differentiated. The five resource setup, which is different from the Orvi cheap setup by having lower ore. The five resource setup combined with the port strategy as well as combined with the wood brick strategy and there's actually also one where it has all three of those you can see that orvi cheap also doesn't perform too hot either here which is in line with the previous graph however there's also a very big unknown pile that they was unable to finish but the data is still very interesting this is the same graph however it combines the data for largest army with the strategies as you can see so the players who won with the orvi cheap strategy also very often won the largest army which is no surprise out of the unknown pile 64 percent of the players won with the largest army so it is very possible that a lot of the these players were Orvi cheap players like for example you had wheat and sheep on your first two settlements and then you built towards the third resource to play an Orvi cheap strategy that way so that was still unquantified the port strategy won more with the largest army than without it and the wood brick strategy also took home the the largest army a couple times but most of the time it didn't and it's interesting that the five resource setup often also took home the largest army which i didn't really expect to be the case but i always feel like five resource setup aligns more with the longest road but apparently i'm wrong <laughs> So on this graph you see the strategies combined with the players who actually took home the longest road. It's very unsurprising that the wood brick players did this quite a bit. The Orvi cheap players didn't do this quite often but still 10 times. Port strategy 40 times. The unknown strategy quite high still but lower than a wood brick strategy. Here are the strategies combined with ports. You can see that the winning Orvi cheap players often built on a 3 for 1 port as the red indicates and the blue indicates that you didn't build on a port at all within the first three settlements or now and it's around 50 50 for wood brick we saw before that the three for one port is not as vital as it is for or cheap and here we see the same results but we see them for the two for one ports so it's very interesting to see that Orvi Cheap has won less with the sheep board, while sheep is a, pre a predominant factor in the strategy, than the five resource setup. And you can see uh, the light blue color is the sheep board. So it's very small for Orvi Cheap, actually. So this was the last graph. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Dave, for making this all possible. Have a wonderful day. And here's the other research video if you want to watch something next.